Here's a tutorial on basic Toy House features and how to navigate the website. This video will be sectioned and there will be timestamps in the description, so if there's something specific you want to know about, you can skip right to it. So in the last video where I talked about different sites and which are good for artists, I brought up Toy House and mentioned how much I liked it. And as I was recording that section of the video, it got me thinking, man, if I wanted to go over everything Toy House had to offer, I could go on for an entire separate video. So that's what I did, because a whole lot of people tell me that Toy House is too confusing for them to figure out, because it does look pretty confusing when you first make your account. And when I randomly go through the list of people that I've invited, I notice a lot of them made an account but didn't stay active, which makes me think that the initial confusion of how to work things might discourage people from using the site at all. So yeah, community service, helping the people, totally not trying to force people into my addiction. So first I'm going to talk about invite codes. If you went on to try and make an account, you've probably noticed pretty quickly that you can't without an invite code. So where do you get these? The good news is invite codes are super easy to find if you look in the right places. Users with premium get a free two codes every week, and those stack up really fast if they're a loser with no friends to invite, like a certain someone. I guarantee you if you hit up anyone with that star by the name, they will be able to provide you with one. I would say that you could ask me, but I said that in the last video, and that video kind of got a lot more attention than I'm used to. Uh, and now I'm fresh out, and also overwhelmed with Discord friend requests from people asking for codes. <laughs> so no, don't ask me. <laughs> or at least ask me again in like a year when I have them. My advice is if someone is asking you to pay them with money or art or whatever for a code, don't. I think someone did the math and one code is worth like 20 cents. It's discouraged by Toy House itself to pay for codes. Most people will give them to you for free. Unless there are hundreds of people asking me for a code, which, um, there were, I literally have no reason to restrict who I give them to. You're better off just asking some guy who has premium directly rather than trying to buy them off of someone on the internet. There really isn't a shortage. A lot of people with premium have more than they know what to do with. I had over a hundred as of like a week ago. If for whatever reason you can't find someone who can give you a code, you can probably find them on DeviantArt groups or some forum somewhere, but it'll be harder to get them that way, especially because they'll get taken really quickly if they're posted publicly, and a lot of people will want you to draw them or pay them for one, which again is a bit of a scam, because your art is worth more than 20 cents. Don't you dare argue with me in that comment section, my good fella. But yeah, that's basically it for invite codes. So now let's talk about the website navigation and what all the buttons mean. So if you've already made an account, this is probably what you're going to see when you go to the website. This is the front page. It shows you some random characters and recently made characters. Once you subscribe to people, you'll also have a feed where you can see characters that they own. And characters that are trending will appear further up in your feed, meaning characters belonging to someone you're subscribed to that got a lot of favorites in a short amount of time. You can adjust the display settings for your feed here by clicking that little uh, cogwheel button, is that what they're called? Your notifications will appear up here, and since this is an alt account I made a while ago that I haven't been using, um, I have a bunch. <laughs> the heart symbol means people have either favorited one of your characters, favorited one of your images, or subscribed to you. The star means new activity from people you follow. Uh, I'm subscribed to one person right now on this alt, and he's moved to a new account, but I can see all the stuff he was uploading on that account before he left. It shows you when they've posted new art to their characters, when they've posted new characters, or when they've edited a character. This symbol with the three lines is for bulletins, which are kind of like people's posts. The little chat message icon means communication, so when people have commented on your profile or your characters, or replied to one of your comments. There's also a notification for character transfers, which will be a little person and appear furthest to the left. That's when someone has requested to trade you a character, or if they requested to add art to one of your characters. And there is one more for when someone privately messages you, which will be a little letter and will be all the way to the right. There are four options on your top bar all the way to the left. Uh, profile obviously takes you to your own profile. Forums is the Toy House forums. I don't use the forums much, um, but you can use them to find cool code templates and stuff, which I'll talk about later. Browse lets you either search for the stuff on your feed or for specific characters. You have all kinds of options of how you want them to be filtered. Check this one that says images, you'll find my character right there on the front page. Submit is what you can use to either upload new images, characters, stories, or posts. Worlds are collections of characters, people use them for role plays, for art groups, or for whatever they want. If you hover over your name on the right, you can see a drop down menu. The first option takes you to your profile. This also lets you view your settings as well as some other management options. So lastly for this section, I'll go over what's on your profile and what's on other people's profiles. If you see profiles like mine that kind of look like this, but a lot different, it's because they used code to change up their profile's appearance. 
You can do the same thing even if you don't know any code, but I'll talk about that later. If their layout looks really different and appears to change up your entire theme, again like how mine looks, they used CSS on their page, which means they have premium. But usually they'll have the same buttons, just in different places. Uh, bulletins will take you to all the bulletins posted on that profile. Characters takes you to the characters. Links takes you to your character links, which you can use to show two characters' relationships with each other. You can link your characters with your own characters or with other people's. It's really fun to give them a dynamic this way. Worlds takes you to what worlds you're a member of or owner of. Favorites takes you to your favorited characters. If you're super organized, you can even have folders for your favorites, so you can sort them by what types of characters they are or something. Designs takes you to what characters you or that profile has made, even if they belong to other people. Art takes you to your art tab, where it shows any art that was credited as your profile. Library will take you to any literatures that you wrote. Comments takes you to your profile comment section, which can also be viewed a bit on your profile as is, though you can change the format of your profile to an extent. Stats takes you to an about page with some statistics about you. You'll always be able to see your own stats, but you can customize these checkboxes to choose what will show to other people. I advise that you look over this right after making an account, because by default these will all be enabled, and if any of this information uh, isn't information you want public, then you can hide it right away. So now I'm going to talk about everyone's favorite part, HTML and profile customization. I'm pretty sure HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's a quote-unquote coding language, not like Python or Java, but strictly for customization. It's far more straightforward than a traditional coding language. Toyhouse does something that a lot of more old-school sites do in the way that it lets you customize your profile to whatever extent you want. Since they give you HTML, you can really do almost anything on your profile. <laughs> People have like interactive profiles and really cool designs. The good thing is, there are so many free-to-use code templates other people have made for the fellas who don't know anything about HTML. And all you have to do is copy and paste a bunch of text into a box and fill in your name and whatever else you want. These guys make sure to make it really easy and straightforward to figure out how to fill these templates out. You can find these free-to-use templates all over the place, as well as ones with different themes and such. The Browse feature is a good way to find popular or trending codes. Just go to the search page and uncheck everything else except HTML slash CSS. You can check one of these boxes depending on what you want to see. Popular is a good way to find codes that other Toyhouse users like. They're tried and true and really nice. You can find more underground ones through a lot of delving. I found a majority of free codes through just looking at other people's profiles because free code will almost always include built-in crediting. And you can also find them through people's favorite folders. I'll include a link to my favorite folder filled with codes and other free stuff that I found that I like. Something important to keep in mind is that you are able to customize both your main profile as well as all your characters' profiles. Coding templates usually specify which they're intended to be used for, but you can tell right off the bat that if it has a section for lore, then it's probably designed to be used as a character profile and not on your profile. You can obviously customize or tweak these a bit to match what you want them to be, which is what I do with all the codes that I use, but this takes some knowledge of HTML to know how to do so without breaking it. Before you paste any free code in, Make sure that your display settings have the code editor checked on. I won't show step by step how to use these and fill in these templates because that would take too long and a lot of free templates have instructions on them anyways, but just remember to read th through those instructions if you're new to Toy House as well as any rules for usage they have because they went out of their way to share the code for free and the least that you could do is follow the bare minimum rules that they provided. Now I'm going to talk about some terminology used on Toy House and explain what it all means because a lot of these words are confusing and meaningless when you first join the site. F2U, or sometimes FTU, means free to use. It refers to free bases or free codes or anything that you don't have to pay to use. Toy House has a shit ton of free art and site resources. Like, a crazy amount. This doesn't always mean that you don't have to credit the creator, however, so please read any rules they have before you start using stuff. UFO, UFT, or UFS means up for offer, trade, or sale. Sale usually means that they have a fixed price of how much the character costs. Trade usually means that they're looking to trade it for other characters. And offer usually means they're not entirely sure what they're looking for and are willing to look at offers on the character. Sometimes a mix of money, trades, or art. Though people kind of also just use these terms interchangeably for all of those things. Auctions on characters basically work the same way auctions in real life do. SB stands for starting bid. It means the minimum money the first person who bids should start with. MI stands for minimum increase, and it means the minimum amount of money you can add on to the previous bid when bidding. And AB stands for auto buy, and means the money that will automatically buy the character if offered. FH stands for forever homed, and it's usually a tag people use on characters to say that they're never going to sell the character or put them up for offers. 
Dreamies is a term people use to refer to characters they really want to own someday. Some people make favorite folders called Dreamies where they favorite characters that they see that they really like. The reason they do this is usually for character offering, so if people are trading for characters and they see that they own a character the other person really likes, they can offer that. It's also used to just keep track of characters you like and have them stored somewhere so you can pop in now and again to see their new art and see if they're for sale or offer. Payments refers to owed art. If you have payments to do, it means you offered on a character and you haven't finished that art yet. When someone asks for pings, it means they want to be pinged if a character goes up for offer. If there are more terms that you've seen around that you don't get, just comment and I can tell you what it means since I probably know I'm chronically online on this site. So now let's talk about the less technical part and also the part that people get terribly wrong the most often. General site etiquette. 1. Don't offer on characters or ask for characters that aren't explicitly marked as up for offers. It's really rude and some people on Toy House aren't into character trading at all and won't take well to it. 2. Try to avoid backing out of your money offers. Artists sometimes rely on their art and designs as their primary source of income and use it to plan out how they're going to pay for bills and whatnot. So when someone says they'll buy something and then come back two weeks later to say that they can't anymore, it's really stressful for that artist. 3. Hand in hand with this, don't spend money that you don't have. Some auctions or character sales accept holds, meaning they're willing to hold on to the character and not sell it to anyone else until you get the money to pay for it. Don't ask for a hold if you're not 100% sure where that money is coming from. So don't ask for a hold just because you really like the character and are just hoping that you'll randomly stumble upon that money. It's generally assumed by the artist that you are expecting the money from somewhere. Like a set date you'll get a paycheck. 4. Do not accuse people of design theft unless you have genuine grounds to do so. Just because a character looks similar to yours doesn't mean it's a copy. People get similar ideas, it happens. Be careful about accusing people of stuff that you're not 100% sure about. 5. Filter all your work that needs to be filtered. Please! This especially goes for NSFW work because there's a mix of kids and adults on the site and you should not be exposing children to porn because you were too lazy to tag your art. If you don't want to tag every single piece, just put on your profile warning that your account has a heavy amount of eye or gore NSFW or whatever. Or you can tag the whole character with a warning for what the character's art might have. That's what I do. I don't tag each individual image because it just takes too long. Uh, I have on my profile warning, my profile about, and my character warnings that there will be eye strain on my account. That way, I don't expose people to things they don't want to be exposed to. Easy. 6. Read people's profile warnings, please. If they say that they don't do pings, don't ask for pings. If they say that they don't want their characters to be offered on, don't offer on them. It's so annoying. 7. Credit everywhere applicable. That means if you used free use stuff, automatically assume that you should credit unless it expresses that you don't have to. When it comes to free HTML, most coders include a section for their crediting on the code itself, so you don't have to worry about that, just don't remove that. Bottom line, when you're new to Toy House, the best way to figure things out is to just click on random buttons and see what they do. Uh, I've been told that people don't really like the site interface, but I promise it'll grow on you if you just explore and take some time to look around and have patience with yourself. Anyways, that's all I really have for today. Hopefully that helped you with the site a bit. Thank you guys for the support on the last video, by the way. I met a lot of new people and I really appreciate it. If you still have questions, feel free to ask them. Please stop adding me on Discord asking for Toy House codes, though my notifications are flooded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.